The Great Plains uh, YP 2425 uh, basically has increased our productivity and planting a lot more than the other planters we've run in the past. Uh, with uh, the bulk fill system that's on it, we haven't run that in the past on any planters, and it's uh, been a good asset to have in the planters. The finger metering system is uh, basically reliable, and uh, once you get things set where they need to be, then uh, you can basically go and don't, and don't have any worries. Uh, the way the planter floats in our ground situations has been better than the other planters we've run. Uh, with the way the floating hitch is and the way the whole mainframe flexes, uh, in some of our sandier soils and muck soils, the machine just floats so much better than anything else we've ever run before. And you can tell in the fields when you look at them how even they are and uh, the way the emergence is is, is is a lot better. The row cleaners have worked extremely well. Uh, the adjustment on them is uh, probably a little easier than what we've run in the past in some other situations. Uh, they're a Martin cleaner, but it's got the bracket from uh, Great Plains, and I've got some friends that run Martin row cleaners on their planters, and uh, a couple of them have actually had to take their row cleaners off to season the plant for a couple of days because they couldn't get through trash because of the way they were, the trash was coming back around on the, on the brackets. And, we haven't experienced any problems with these, so I'd say it's a good fit with the planter. We've got excellent seed to soil contact because of the row cleaners and because of the seed firmers that are on them, and uh, the emergence has been second to none. When different people look at the planter, they kind of they think they're a cast wheel at first, and then I bring them back there and show them the rubber. And had a few few guys ask me if we put them on our planters. I mean, they kind of were impressed by them. The way the press wheels kind of tuck the seed different and kind of break up a little bit of the compaction and lift it back up and tuck it around the seeds different instead of just pressing it down firm around the seed. Uh, we were a little worried in a couple situations where we planted about some, uh, some sidewall compaction with the openers and with those press wheels the way they work it kind of lifted that back through and, and pushed it back down and kind of broke it apart so uh, we've been kind of pleased with the way they worked. We've ran in a couple days maybe we're you know, we normally want to with other planters. Uh, Great Plains puts uh, scrapers on the depth wheels on these planters. And if you just get a little tackiness, if you have a little shower that comes through in some of our sandier ground, and you get a half a tenth of rain or something, we would have been out for a while. And with these, the way the, the cleaners on the, the depth wheels work, we've been able to keep planting. We didn't lose any time. Uh, whereas any other neighbors that were planting around us had to stop because they couldn't get their accurate depth. So that's been a great improvement with this planter. Folding and unfolding the planter, I had quite a few people watch me do that and they're kind of amazed that something so big can unfold and fold back up in a matter of about 30 seconds. Um, it's just a matter of running one, one hydraulic lever uh, to raise the tongue and another hydraulic lever to fold it and put the tongue back down to lock it in place. And uh, it's, it's relatively easy and simple. People are just amazed at the speed that you can pull in the field and get unfolded and start planting uh, versus the way it used to be with, with other equipment. If you, if you fill stuff right and get stuff pretty even, uh, when you're filling the hoppers, then you pretty much will have an even emptiness uh, when, when the planter's empty. You might have to shuffle seed around once, uh, but other than that, you really, you really don't have to. It, it evens out pretty easy. So as long as you run your fan speeds where they need to be run according to certain seed sizes, you really won't have any problem with delivery of the row units. Uh, if you're running smaller seed, quite naturally you don't need as many CFM and you get in a large seed and you forget to turn your fan back up, you know, you make your first few rounds and all of a sudden it'll remind you that you need to turn it up. So it's just a matter of thinking through the process and how it all works, but it, it works pretty good. With the acres we're covering, uh, we've had very minimal downtime uh, over the course of the year. Uh, probably between the two planters, I would say six hours total between the two planters for the whole course of the season and we've been running for about four weeks now so uh, there's no complaints on that end. There's just, just nothing hard about the planter at all. It's you know it's simple to work on, you got lots of room to work on it, you can go underneath it and do the rows. I mean it's everything else is pretty simple. It really does not take very long to get used to it. Probably the hardest thing is is learning how to back up with the swivel wheels but once you get that mastered uh, it's, it's not really a problem. We try to plant everything we can get our, get our planter close to. You know, and we back into a lot of corners and we got a lot of ditches and uh, uh, once you get onto it, uh, it's not really a big problem. 
It goes up real high. I mean, to work on it, you can crawl underneath it. Uh, the uh, dump on the bottom of the hoppers is real easy, you know, and with the, you know, the semis we run, you can actually put your hose up there, tie it down, and do a bunch of other stuff while you're, while you're filling your hoppers, you know. It's, it's, it's really a big fan. I think it's the only way to go. I'm glad we went to it myself, because it made it a lot easier on the old timers, you know what I mean? <laughs> The way you can change your down pressure is just, it's about the simplest method I've ever seen. You know, take an inch and eighth wrench and you're done. You can do the whole planter probably about two minutes if you really, you know, really get to it. We got some muck ground that it's probably the best planting it's ever done, you know, because uh, the, the rows just float right along and the way it tilts on the tongue and tilts on the wings, uh, it's an excellent product. On the whole, uh, Great Plains planters that we bought this year have probably been one of the better investments we've made on our farm. Uh, the key to your whole farming season starts with this planter, and if it ain't done right there, you, you lose a lot throughout the year, and uh, it's been a very good asset for us. The Great Plains planter has as good a row unit as anything on the market. You won't find anybody making any better row unit. It's, it's tough, it's built right, it's built, it'll take it. Central fill, phew. Uh, my wife was tired of filling the boxes individually, so I was forced to get a central fill in one respect. <laughs> With the Great Plains Planner, you have a leading blade and a lagging blade, which makes a narrower, cleaner trench if they're opposing each other nose to nose, it wants to bulldoze, where if it lags like the Great Plains does, it, it tends to want to cut a trench. Huge advantage. There is another manufacturer to doing that. The majors aren't doing that. I bought mine set up on twin row. If I, for some reason, see an advantage to go with 15, I can move it out to 15. If I want to go to 20 inch rows, I can do it 20 or go back to 30. The same planter, I can do any of those configurations with the same machine. Huge advantage, nobody else can do that. The biggest advantage is being able to push the populations up and still have a healthy corn plant. Not one in the fall is gonna be big around your thumb that will fall over at a 15 mile an hour wind but one that is healthy, same size as it would be if it was 30 inch planted at 30,000 population. That's the advantage. The year before, this field that we're standing in, I replanted it three times, uh, and it was June the 4th when I finally, <laughs> the third time took, it was uh, 175 bushel corn, and it shouldn't have been anyways close to that, but it did, and I, I firmly believe it was because it, the population was up where it was supposed to be. I have a 22 inch middle that I can run my sprayer in, will not run over any beans. This 22 inch middle I side dress, I, uh, I have 18 four tires, I can run up and down these rows and side dress. I can also plant soybeans the same configuration, no disadvantage, no problems. I can uh, harvest this corn with conventional corn head. I don't have to spend $50,000 for a uh, prototype corn head that may or may not work. Harvesting twin row, you will notice that it is a narrower middle. You will see, obviously see more stalks, more foliage, and you will notice that for the first round or two. And after you get past the all or the surprise that it actually does work, that the corn head doesn't break it off or it doesn't get tangled up, but it actually is working, then you absolutely forget that you're doing twin row. But the reminder will be that normally in a certain place in the field that uh, your full tank alarm will go off. It'll happen sooner with twin row. It does. You have to see it to believe it. I wanted to prove to myself that twin row would or would not work. It works. <laughs>